Assalamu alaikum guys, I want to do a quick video addressing a very important topic and that is what I refer to as the psychology of leaving Islam. Now in, in many cases, and I've noticed this, and even recently I was speaking to uh, a brother whose daughter uh, has left Islam and he has spent a lot of time, and may Allah bless him and may Allah guide his daughter um, and give him patience. But he has spent a lot of time engaging with her as far as, you know, sharing proofs for Islam, giving her evidences, you know, going through arguments. And every single time he gets to a place with her where she can't deny what's obvious or cannot counter the proofs that he's giving, she turns around and says, well, there's a chance. You know, there is a still a slight chance, there is a possibility that it could have been otherwise. So for example, and this is just a hypothetical example, say if he, if he you know, shares an argument, say the Quranic argument for God's existence, and he shows her and highlights to her that the most rational conclusion, when you look at the universe and you ask the, the big questions, which is that where did it come from? And you go through all of the possibilities and you realize that the most rational conclusion is that the universe was created by an uncreated creator. Now, by the way, I'm just giving you a summary. I'm not giving you the whole argument, but just to make the point that when he gets to that point with her, she says, well, there's still a chance. There's still a possibility. We don't know what happened in the beginning of the universe and so on. And he's faced this over and over again. And I've seen this happen over and over again where you speak to someone and initially when you talk to them, they they give reasons for them leaving Islam to be, you know, I didn't find proof, I don't think there's good reasons to believe in God, etc, etc. And then you engage with them on the rational level and you give them proofs for God's existence and you have that dialogue with them. But you realize that as soon as you, for a lack of a better way of describing this, as soon as you corner them or you make them realize that logically, philosophically, rationally, well, there's nothing else you can do here this is the best conclusion, they will still deny it. They will say chance, there's a possibility. Now they'll bring in this chance hypothesis in, in the case of God, but with everything else in their life, as most regular humans, they won't go by what's possible. People go with what's most likely. Like for example, if I was to you know, say to you, you know, if I was to blindfold you and tell you to run across a busy motorway, would you do that? You'd say no. And I'd ask you why. And you would say, well, you know, if I'm blindfolded and you're telling me to run across a busy motorway or highway, you know, chances are I'm going to get hit and I'm going to die. But if I turn around to, and said to them, well, no, there is also a chance. There's say a 1% chance or a 2% chance that you'll survive. You won't get hit by a car. Would they take that chance? Would you take that chance? And the answer is no. Why? Well, because you know that the overwhelming odds are that you will get hit by a car and have a fatal accident and injure yourself at the very least. So you don't take that chance. Although there is that possibility you won't get hit by a car. And the point I'm making here is that when it comes to God now, we take this common sense and we throw it out the window. Or in these cases, these ex-Muslims or people that have, are wanting to leave Islam or have left Islam, they will throw that out. Now, why do they do that? What does this tell us? Number one, what it tells us is that for them, it's not a rational problem. You know, leaving Islam was not a rational decision. Because if it was the case, well, now you have the evidences. We've shared them with you. That should mean you should come back to Islam, but they don't. So what's really going on here? Again, not in every case, but in many cases, there is a deeper, more basic, emotional underlying reason that they cover up and they don't want to explore or talk about and they cover this up with this rational cloak and the reason the real reason again in many cases is that especially young people when they cannot control their desires and they want to do things that go against Islam and they start to believe in things that don't align with Islam for whatever reasons, society, you know, whatever, our current understanding of things, you know, subjective opinions of others, etc. Whatever the reasons are, they start to, they, they, they develop beliefs and ideas and they have desires they want to fulfill, which don't 
fully aligned with what Islam teaches. Now, what happens here is there's there's a what, what I would refer to as there's this cognitive dissonance that's created within a person. So there are two things that this person is trying to hold on to, but they are conflicting with each other, and this is making the person unstable. We don't like ins- unstability in our lives. We li- like our concepts, our ideas to be aligned with one another. But there are, there's this destabilization within the person where on one end they know that they are Muslim and they follow a religion and the religion says has certain do's and don'ts, although not it's not the case that the whole religion is a set of do's and don'ts, not at all. You know, it's a very small even when you read the Quran, it's a very small portion of the Quran that deals with the do's and don'ts. And on the other hand, they under, they they are living a life and they are doing things or wanting to do things and they have certain beliefs which they have arrived at which go against what Islam says. So now there is this this tension, this internal contra- you know, contradiction, if you like, or supposedly in some cases. And like I said, people don't like to remain in this state of confusion or dissonance. So they have to do one of two things. They have to either one, give up their desires, try to understand what Islam is actually saying in many cases, and see how then it really aligns with their beliefs and also try to understand where they get their beliefs from. Isn't it the case that most of the things we believe in today are based on our experiences and our engagement with other human beings and their subjective opinions? That is the case. There's no objective grounding to certain views that people hold today in regards to morality, etc. Because remember, most people are secular. They don't have an anchor to ground morality in. So that's one thing they could do is they could really try to understand Islam and really understand, try to understand where their beliefs come from and their ideas come from. And try to also understand that they have desires, but it it is possibly the case that the things they want to do are probably not good for them. And who is best to know? Allah is the one that's best to know, the one that created us, not us ourselves. We can get many things wrong. And then go have the courage to go on the journey of trying to align themselves with Islam, not saying that they'll be perfect. No one is perfect. They'll still make mistakes. They may still hold on to certain beliefs and ideas which go against Islam. But as long as they recognize that what's in the Quran is from Allah, it's from the Creator, and it's perfect. And what's what they hold on to and believe in, it's something that they have come to believe based on the experiences and whatever. So then go on that journey, have the courage to go on that journey to bring themselves closer to Islam and move themselves away from the things that are essentially bad and in- incorrect. That's one thing they can do. The second thing is, and what's in th- what they believe is the easier thing to do is, you know what? I have to distance myself from Islam. So psychologically, they understand this and they're like, okay, to hold on to my beliefs, to hold on to my views, to fulfill my desires and do what I want to do, become my own God, I have to distance myself from Islam. Now, they need a reason to distance themselves from Islam or turn away from Islam. So then their mind, and this may be subconscious, goes to work and shaitan obviously is, is, is uh, engaged at this point. Then their mind goes to work in finding reasons to reject Islam. Because once they do that, then there's no more dissonance. They just do whatever they want, enjoy themselves without any accountability. And there is no more tension. And that, at least in their minds, is the easier thing to do. And that's why in many cases you'll find these young Muslims, they would start to come up with reasons as to why they don't believe Islam is true. Or try to convince themselves. And they'll do that to a degree and then they'll push Islam aside and then you know they will carry on just for living the way they want to live. And they'll also convince themselves that, yeah, eventually, at some point, that, yeah, uh, you know, there are no good reasons to believe in God. There's no good reasons to believe Islam is the truth. There's no reasons to believe that the Quran is from God. You know? And, and they won't give it much thought. That's enough. And they'll just push it aside and they'll keep going. Now, whenever these people are challenged and they're shown that, look, all of these supposed reasons you have to believe that the, the Quran is not from God or God doesn't exist, etc., they actually are not true. And we have good reasons to believe in God. We have good reasons to believe in the Quran. You know, that now puts them again in a state of, it creates this, this other form of tension within them. Now what they want to do is they, they want to reject the reasons you give. And if they realize and find themselves in a position where they can't, then they fall on or to the, and they, they rely upon that chance hypothesis. Well, there maybe still is a chance. You know, maybe there's this possibility. And this is why common sense goes out the window and they'll go with, with the option that's most unlikely. That explains to us why 
people do this? Why is it that when you approach someone, and especially in the context of our discussion, ex-Muslims, and you you ask them why they left, and they say that it was for rational reasons, then you give them reasons as to you know why their rational reasons aren't good enough, and then why they then turn around and say, oh, but there's still a chance, there's still a possibility. We weren't there at the beginning of the universe. This is what's going on inside. And, and the first thing to do in this case is that they, they, number one, they have to have the courage to realize that this is what's going on. They have to face what they're doing internally, subconsciously, psychologically. They have to realize that this is what's going on. This is what I've probably tried to do. And secondly, they have to have the resolution. If they really want to, you know, figure things out and do what's really meaningful, I guess, from this perspective, they need to have the resolution to now start that journey and realize that number one, you know, for f just turning away from Islam and rejecting Islam is not the solution in the grand scheme of things. How long are they going to fulfill their desires for? How long are they going to hold on to the beliefs that they hold on to? Maybe in the next five years, they'll change their beliefs. And it happens with all of us. And that shows just the subjective nature of our views, our morals and ethics these days. You know, and the, uh, how long are they going to enjoy the, the things that they enjoy, fulfilling their desires? I mean, uh, only until you're so old, you know, until your body stops functioning as well. And then you can't really enjoy the desires, you fulfill the desires you used to fulfill, say, you know, a decade ago or two decades ago. Then what? You know, and is life all about just fulfilling your desires and having fun, which is not satisfying anyway, intrinsically, because once you've got what you wanted and fulfilled your desire, very soon after you want to fulfill another desire or repeat the fulfillment of that desire what's what's the point and i know these are a lot these are deep things to think about for young pe young people because you know especially today we, we're encouraged in a way not to think deeply and just to do what feels good but again you have to have the courage to do that if you really want to have a meaningful life you have to one be serious with this and ask yourself okay you know let me be honest with myself as to why i've distanced myself from islam in the first place and secondly let me see if i have that resolve to go on that journey, that resolution to go on that journey to doing what's right even if it's difficult. And that's what's going to make your life meaningful. So I just wanted to share this because one, for, it's, it's for someone that's speaking to such a person. It will help them realize because in many cases, they share an argument and the person says, well, no, it doesn't really make sense or I don't accept it or this possible chance. And they think that their argument's not good enough. Then they go for another argument and a third and a fourth and a fifth. And it, they never get anywhere because the real underlying issue is not being addressed. You know, where in, whereas in reality, for these young people, maybe you know, it's something. It's just that they want to do things and they believe in things which go against Islam, and that's why they're just finding reasons to turn away from Islam. Or in other cases, it could be well, they've had some experiences in life, some difficult experiences which they have not understood properly, and they've ended up blaming God. And therefore, it's another emotional reason to turn away from Islam. And then later on, they've covered all of this up with rational discourse, right? So when rationality is not the real problem, then tackling that is not the real solution. So it'll help people. Hopefully, this video will help those that are dealing with such people. And if you are such a person, then I'll only encourage you to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, you know, how long are you going to be fulfilled by just fulfilling your desires? And holding on to subjective ideas and views Which may go against Islam and the Quran Because in some cases It's just they haven't even understood the Quran And Islam And what it actually says So then they've based on their false interpretation or understanding Built this idea in their heads That what they believe is against the Quran and Islam When that may not even be the case in some cases So anyway I just wanted to share this with you guys Um and just for the young Muslims listening to this, you know, I know it's very easy to f want to fulfill your desires and just have fun and enjoy yourself. But I want to ask you guys, you know, is that what life is all about? And secondly, I want you to realize that you have the courage within you. You have it within you to do what's difficult. And by doing that, I'm telling you, by doing what's difficult, but what's correct is what's going to bring meaning to your life. It's what's going to bring true fulfillment and happiness to your life. Anyway, I'll leave you guys with that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll speak to you guys next time. Asalaamu Alaikum.